just realized I didn't put any lipstick on. Oh, well. I don't think you guys are on here to look at me. I'm here to look at the car. Even though I don't exactly do amazing artwork with that either, okay? People have told me. They up my game. Guys, I'm still an amateur. A hundred years later. <laughs> now, guys, do you remember? I don't know how old some of you are, but uh, in 2007, um, the A class was, well, it was like an odd looking thing, right? Like, and it used to like topple over in a moose test. Now, if you don't know what a moose test is, go and Google it because it's quite fun to watch. It's like when you're going quite fast, you do like um, sort of aggressive like steering in a way, right? So if you like, and then you'd be like, boom. A dunk. A funny little thing. But anyways, fast forward to like the third generation A-Class and what a game changer for Mercedes-Benz. Um, and I say for Mercedes-Benz as a whole because it was. You know, the, the A-Class changed the age group of people buying Mercedes-Benz. My opinion. And I'm almost certain it's true. I mean, I could do the research on this, but it had to. It, I know it did. I know it did because I'm a professional. I don't know how I know, but I know. Um, and obviously, because now you had youngsters who were very keen on, because this was such a stylish car back. I mean, it was like quite a wow factor. I think I saw it at Joburg Motor Show back then. And I remember just thinking, oh my God, like I want one of those. And I was like, and because of my age, I was young <laughs> back in the day. Um, I never ever considered driving a Merc, not at that age in any case, but now all of a sudden I wanted one. And what that meant was that you now had a younger group and a younger generation in Mercedes-Benz who then would probably grow with the brand and then buy up, you know. Now I'm in, you know, many generations later, we're now in an in updated version, um, although it's very subtle. And what Mercedes-Benz also did was to make a sedan version of the A-Class so that you didn't kind of now just jump straight up, but you were like, okay, well, I've now got a family or starting a family or whatever, so I need a little bit more space. Well, I have to say, it's not like, I mean, I wouldn't consider it a family, family car. Like, if you don't have a toddler, I think, or toddlers, and maybe you have like a non-lanky teenager, then maybe, but the space in here, like, so the boot is great, it's 500 liters. I love a sedan, I love a boot, you know this. Um, the problem for me is a car seat, and this is many cars, right? Um, but many who, who kind of establish themselves as a family car, a family version of a car, and I'm like, oh, hang on a second, hang on a second. So if Luke is in that seat, the front passenger has like very limited leg room. It's not horrific but it's not great and it's very claustrophobic. And in fact, I find that in the A-Class entirely, I feel very boxed in. And this isn't like a sort of, you know, like hatch or sedan, like, or a, you know, compact car versus like SUVs and stuff, because obviously you're gonna feel a lot more, you know, cause I feel claustrophobic in some SUVs. I'll have you know, mainly the coupe versions. It's just something to consider. I've used Luca's scooter again to show you about the boot because it really does swallow all that stuff. So that's great. Once you're in, once you're comfortable, fine. But like, I think that there are better options at this price range for a family car, okay? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, if you, there's work, workmanship going on on the side of the road, but there is a gap and you're on that side, on coming, move over. Everybody does it, you're fine, so then people can keep going, traffic can keep flowing. Why be the asshole who now just sits there knowing he can get through? <laughs> anyway, back on track. So this is now this is a 10.25 inch um, screen here, and then like the seven inch cluster or whatever, it's that one long sort of bar thing, there's a little bit of black mark in the middle, but it actually looks super nice. It's a very well laid out cabin. Um, I love that it has a volume roller jaw here. Um, I hate the haptic, like these touchy, slidey things. I couldn't use them because with volume, especially, you can't get it to what you specifically want, really. Or I try to turn it up just a notch and then it's like, ah! So I don't have those, but this is just, whatever, that's not new. Um, I just thought I'd mention it. Um, but like I say, overall, like really beautifully laid out. Do you know what I noticed for the first time? I don't know if maybe where I've been, have never noticed it. Maybe it's the first time here, but I don't, I don't know. Anyways, is traffic light view. Who knew? 
I, I just don't know how I would not have noticed that before. But anyways, it's like if you're at the traffic light, I think you have to be the first car though. It's not like when you're behind cars. But all of a sudden the screen comes up and it shows you um, the sort of intersection. And I was like, what is the point? I can see with my eyes. However, after a little bit of Googling, um, it says that it's mainly because of if you, like sometimes, you know, your line of sight, whatever, you can't see the traffic light. And so you won't see it change colors. So then this does that, like helps you. Dude, come on, come on. Do we need such things? I mean, is it helpful? Gimmicky, over the top? I don't know, perpetuating a rather lazy driver system? Like, why is no, just look, I just do that. You know, I don't know, I hate that. that. Um, but I do like watching it, which also then distracts me. So not a great idea, actually. Anyways, under the bonnet, we've got a two litre, four cylinder turbo diesel, 110 kilowatts of power and 340 newton meters of torque. Absolutely not 340, it's 320 newton meters of torque. Um, sorry, a little flip there. Um, so uh, not a, a hugely spirited drive, obviously, not exactly, you know, exhilarating, but certainly punchy enough. It's actually a lovely sort of cruiser if you are on like the highway the road noise and the wind noise is quite intrusive into this cabin and i and i checked it on like a number of highways and a number of roads because i couldn't imagine that it was but it actually was so much so that i had to like turn the music up constantly i was trying to listen to a podcast i had to turn that up like i don't think that's good enough it must be better insulated if i'm paying what i'm paying for this car <laughs> i'm not paying but someone else is do you know so fuel consumption, great. It's claimed at 4.5 liters. Okay, I'm sitting at 5.9, we know how I drive. Um, and the area that I drive in is quite hilly and it's, it's a little, but when you're cruising, I think you can really get that down. So that's always a winner, um, obviously. It's also turbo diesel. Guys, I think I might have to start like a podcast tip sort of section to let you know like what I'm listening to. Cause at the moment I'm just listening to, well, it's been a while, but I'm loving it. It's called, I've had it. And, this, and actually I want to give a shout out to Andrew. So remember my bestie Terence? So Andrew says that this reminds him of me and Terry because we like complain all the time, which is not untrue. Um, but it is a phenomenal, phenomenal podcast. And so if you want to listen to something funny and amazing and just all sorts of wonderful, then listen to I've Had It. You'll thank me. Not the comfiest of seats, I have to say. I haven't, I'm not comfortable in this car. Like really, I'm not. I don't feel almost luxurious enough, like in feel, like in plushness and in softness. And like when you consider that this, so this particular model, I'm in the A200D, um, it comes in at around 950,000. I want all of that. I want to feel cocooned in a very lush, plush, stunning, soft place. And I feel this to be very hard. I think all the black adds to that, of course, but I don't know. I just think that this is not enough car for what you're paying, you know? I, I don't know, like the rivals, like I love an A3 sedan, like go, I like a sedan, do you know? Um, I think the new BMW 1 Series would probably be my pick over these two. I still love the look of an A-Class, but I just find it's getting a little bit, I want to keep saying like long in the tooth, but I need to go and Google what that means again. <laughs> I think it's what I mean. I don't know. Tricky to say. Tricky to say. Um, so yeah, I just think I'm not excited by this anymore. Do you know? And that's bound to happen, I guess. And you know, people have gone SUV crazy and whatever, but I mean, it's still, I think you're paying for badge in this car, if I'm perfectly honest. and. Mercedes-Benz will be very upset maybe that I've said that, but I genuinely think it is. I think they're better cars. I think they're better cars in their um, sort of family um, than the A-Class. I just don't think it's, yeah, not at the top of my list.